Rock and Roll Geek Show 815. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, Uh, online since 2004, it's the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Friday, December 29th, 2017, when I'm recording this show, and it is 7 o'clock p.m. Straight up, friends. I'm going to take a sip of this fine Tecate. I'm opening this Tecate. This is the second one of the day. Ah. Oh, best one so far. Okay, hope you had a great Christmas. I had a fantastic Christmas. My daughter came into town with her boyfriend, and my stepfather came into town. Uh, There was a secret plan in action since about September of this year. I went to a Giants game um, with Martina, my daughter, her boyfriend Alex, or Alex, her boyfriend Alan, and his dad, we all went to the Giants game, and when Martina went to the bathroom, Alan came up to me and asked for his for my daughter's hand in marriage. And, uh, of course, I said yes. He's a good guy. I like the guy a lot. And the plan was a secret plan. Martina had no idea that he was going to propose to her. The plan was my stepdad was going to be flying out from Florida, bringing my mom's engagement ring and wedding ring. My mom is no longer with us. May she rest in peace. He was going to bring her rings, and Alan was going to propose to my daughter, Martina, and give her her grandmother's wedding rings. Well, that happened on Christmas Eve, and so I am going to be the proud (laughs) father-in-law Of a new family. So that happened on Christmas. So it was a great Christmas for me. On my birthday, which was Christmas Eve, I went out in in my kayak and went fishing and crabbing. I caught five nice Dungeness crab and five rockfish. So I had a good uh, crab dinner to bring to Alan's parents for for Christmas. And I had uh, some fish and some other crab to cook on Christmas Eve for us for some chipino with my with my father, with my stepdad. It was a great Christmas, a very special one, and and it's over now, friends. I hope your Christmas was as good as mine. What I'm going to be doing tonight is a track. What I've I've been planning on doing this for a while, and I just never got around to it. But the year's almost over, and it's all, almost time for me to do my uh, top ten albums of 2017. But I've been planning on doing this one for a while. Never did prepare for it. I kind of just kept putting it off and putting it off. What I'm, I'm gonna, but somebody posted on Facebook on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, uh, and it reminded me that I should probably do a track by track of this album, which is called Pinewood Smiles, the brand new album from the Darkness. Uh, Ken Zalewski did his Rock and Roll Geek scoring system, and it and it reminded me that I should probably do mine. So that is what I'm going to do tonight, friends. So if you're not a fan of the darkness, uh, maybe you might want to listen. Maybe you will become a fan of the darkness. I don't know. They're my favorite band besides Cheap Trick right now. I think they are the last true rock and roll stars that are going currently. That's just me. So I'm going to be doing a track-by-track track of the new Darkness album, Pinewood Smile. Before we do that, I'm going to play something from The Last Darkness. I'm just going to be all, pretty much all darkness on this episode. So like I said, if you're not a fan, maybe you will be after this episode's over. And if you really, truly hate the darkness, uh, you can turn this episode off if you want. I understand, friends. Here is something from the last album called Last of Our Kind. This is the title track called Last of Our Kind from The Dark. <laughs>
there you go. That is probably my favorite song on the last record, Last of Our Kind, which was a decent record. It wasn't their best record, but I liked it a lot. I saw them twice when they toured that record. They played once here at the um, Regency Ballroom in San Francisco, and then I saw them again several months later at um, the Catalyst Club in Santa Cruz, California. Catalyst Club was a little bit smaller, and it was a fantastic show. Actually, both, pardon me, on Bourbon with Fine Tecate. Both shows were fantastic shows, and they're coming back in March, and I'm looking forward to seeing them again. All right, before I do the track-by-track of the New Darkness album, Pinewood Smile, I would like to thank some people who donated to the show. The show, this show is survives on your donations, as you know. If it's a, as Adam Curry says, this is a value for value model. If you listen to the show, you think it's worth something, you donate what you think the show is worth. It's as simple as that. If you think the show is great and is worth twenty dollars an episode or twenty dollars a month, you donate twenty dollars a month. If you think the show is a piece of shit. Donate, don't donate anything. If you think this show is, ah, okay, only worth a dollar a month, donate, you get the idea. But if you're, okay, before, let me, before I start, continue the beg fest, which I'm learning to, uh, all right, I'm going to play, let me find some music in the background. Warrior Soul has a brand new album called Back on the Last. Let's have that for some background music. If you are too cheap, to donate to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, you can always go to rockandrollgeek.com and click the Amazon link, and I'll get a little kickback. Hopefully, you did that during the Christmas season when you were shopping for your family and friends. I'll get about maybe a nickel if you spend some money. Or you can go to patreon.com slash r Geek Now the dead are risen Like the following people did A little, little, little bit of Warrior Soul This album is pretty rocking In your swollen teardrops They said my voice is forgiven Thank you to Mike Brown for the $25 on Patreon. I visited, Mike Brown came up and visited this weekend, or this week too, the day after Christmas. We all went to North Beach, had a good dinner. Following day, we went out and bought, went out looking for vinyl. There was no vinyl that I found that I wanted, but he, I helped him find a stack of records. Thank you, Mike Brown, for the $25 every episode on Patreon. Thank you to also another new donor. Let me get to the next song here. Another new donor, Joe Pollack. Donates $6.66. 666 every episode. Thanks, Joe. It's very creative and nice of you. Thank you, friend. Thanks to Betty Wood for the $5. Thanks to Danny Boyd for the $5 on Patreon every episode. Thanks to Daniel Segan for the $5. Thanks to friend of mine and friend of the show, Michael Street, for the $5. Thanks to Ken Kennedy for the $5. Thanks to Chiaki Hinohara from the Metal Moment podcast and the Japanese Metalhead show for the $5. My good friend Chiaki. He had dinner with us. My daughter got into town on the 23rd, and we all went out for some Eritrean food. Eritrean food, I think is how you pronounce it. And Chiaki and his wife joined us. Thank you to Brian Springer for the $5. Thanks to my podcast mentor and co-host of Mad at Dad, Dave Slusser of the Evil Genius Chronicles for the $5. Thanks to Paul Underwood for the $2. Thanks to Mario Zoth for the $2. Thanks to Bruce McMillan for the $2. Thanks to fellow kayak fisherman Matthew Hunt for the $2. Thanks to Eric Stowell for the $2. Thanks to Robert Harvey for the $2. Thanks to 
Three legs, four wheels for the $1. Thanks to Bonstone for the $1. Thanks to Mike Dixon for the $1. Thanks to John Richardson for the $1. Thanks to Corey Kohler for the $1. <sighs> Thanks to everybody who donated on Patreon. And if you can also go to PayPal, click the PayPal link at rockandrollgeek.com. Like Elodie Johns did. On my birthday, she went there and donated $25 just for my birthday. Thank you, Elodie, my first girlfriend. Thanks to Douglas Free for the $20. Thanks to Elodie Johns again for $20. She donates $20 every month. Thanks to Dave Jackson and the School of Podcasting for the $10. Thanks to Jeff and Sherry Thielalalalaki for the $10. I'm a rebellion. Thanks to Paul Fondry for the $10. Thanks to Dave Franco for the $10. That's James Franco's uh, brother, I think. Thanks to James Venters for the $10. Thanks to Jason Shepard for the $10. Thanks to friend of mine and friend of the show, Todd Cunningham, for the $10 and for the Van Halen Rising book. Thanks to Bradley Lisko, BJ Lisko, for the $10. Thanks to friend of the show and friend of mine, Ralph Miller, for the $10. Thanks to John Tennis for the $5. Thanks to Greg Long for the $5. Thanks to Jeff C.A. for the $5. Thanks to Alex James Muscat for the $5. Thanks to Eric Lentz for $5. Thanks to Dean Gillespie for the $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell for the $5. Thanks to Richard Strom for the $5. Thanks to Andrew Howe for the $5. Jero Carroll for the $5. Thanks to Christopher Del Grande for the $5. Thanks to Kelly Mitchell again for another $5. Thanks to John Offenloch for the $5. Thanks to Stephen Mascord for the $5. His book is called Touchstone. Touchstones, and I'm in it. Thanks to Sigmund Heidacher for the $5. Thanks to Brett Garski for the $5. Thanks to Craig Vassiloff for the $5. Thanks to John Bavari for the $5. Thanks to Bradford Page for the $2. Thanks to Peter Spark for the $2. Michael Williams for the $2. Thanks to Adrian Boschok on the forums, Bosch Rock and the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page, which I did not create, but I do maintain. Thanks to Deborah Dreyfus for the $2. By the way, go to the uh, Rock and Roll Geek Facebook page and I will approve you to join the private group. Thanks to Deborah Dreyfus, if that's your real name, for the $2. Thanks to Richard Fusey for the $2. Thanks to Lassie Sattvedhagen for the $2. Thanks to John Skiller for the $2. And finally, thanks to William Moffat for the $1. Without your donations, friends, this show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled death. (sighs) Those people all thought the show was worth was worth something, and if you're not a donor. Well, I would appreciate if you were, friends. That's all I'll say. All right, let me find the Darkness album here on my iTunes playlist. By the way, I just, I got the, I w- another reason I was waiting f- to do this album uh, was because I ordered it on Pledge Music and the downloads never arrived. I did finally get this CD in the mail about a month ago, maybe a little over a month ago. So I finally got the Darkness CD. So I'm going to now do a track by track. This is, this album is the fifth studio album released by The Darkness. It was produced by a guy named Adrian Bushby, who I don't know who that. I have no idea. It came out October 6, 2017, and I received the CD <clears throat> probably about... November 6th. So Pledge Music has re- had really dropped the ball. I don't know if it, maybe it was the darkness who dropped the ball. I don't know. But somehow it took a month for me to get the CD and I never did get the download. So next time I will not be purchasing an album through Pledge Music. I will be pre-ordering it on Amazon. Let me take a sip of this fine Tecate. Ah... This is the first album on Canary Dwarf Records and also on Cooking Vinyl. 
It's the first album. It's the first album that was recorded with Rufus Tiger Taylor on drums, the drummer for uh, the son of the great Roger Taylor from Queen. All right, it recorded in Cornwall, England. What else can I say? There's no, really no liner notes on this on the on the CD. It just vi- there's lyrics. Uh, doesn't say who wrote what. It just basically says written by Justin Hawkins, Dan Hawkins, Frankie Pullane, and Rufus Tiger Taylor. So maybe they all wrote all of them, or maybe they just decided to be a band and give everybody equal credits, which is probably what happened. Produced by Adrian Bushby, engineered by George Perks, recorded at Veda Recording Studios. Yeah, that's about all I have on it. Okay, so there are ten songs on the album. I have the bone the 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 CD has bonus tracks on it. There are is there bonus tracks on the CD? Maybe there's not. I don't think. There, yeah, I guess there are. There are one, two, three, four bonus tracks. So there's a total of fourteen tracks, including the bonus tracks. I think I'm going to review it based on the twelve or on the. 10 tracks. So the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system is as follows, as you know, I'm sure. If you like the song, I give it a plus one. If eh, it's okay, I give it a half. If I don't like it, it's a zero. And then I tally it all up, and that is the score. So if there are 10 good songs on this album that I like, I'll give it a 10 out of 10. If all the songs are only a half, half times 10 comes out to five. So I would give it a five out of 10. You get the idea. All right. The first song is called All the Pretty Girls. That was the first single that was released. I think I probably played it on the Rock and Roll Geek Show. Here's a little bit of All the Pretty Girls. All the Pretty Girls. show Ken Zalewski posted on the Rock and Roll Geek show Facebook page his track by track review as well so I think I will compare mine to his I give this song I like the song it's catchy it's rocking it's not my favorite darkness tune but the thing about the darkness is when you listen to the songs maybe you don't like them but then at least me once I watch the video it makes me like the song more, and this video, although not a great video, decent video, and I like the song. I'm giving this one a plus one. A, not a strong plus one, but a plus one nonetheless. And I will compare now to Ken Zalewski's. He says, here's my unsolicited and probably unwanted review of Pinewood Smile by the Darkness using the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system, of course. He gave this one an enthusiastic plus one. A little bit of solo. I think this is Dan Hawkins doing this solo. Justin Hawkins solos, you can pretty much tell because they are very tasty and melodic. And that was a little bit more of a rock solo. All right, plus one for this one. Next song is called Buccaneers of Hispaniola.
The Darkness is one of those bands that is kind of polarizing. A lot of people either hate them. I think if you hate the darkness or, or don't like the darkness, you, you just kind of don't get it. And then there are other people who do get it and they love the darkness. And those people, to me, I think, I don't know, if you don't like the darkness, I think if you watch them play live, you would really like the band a lot because they are, they are a fun rock and roll band. And to me, they are what rock and roll is all about. You go to a darkness show and you leave having a great time. The rock and roll show, they put on a great show, they rock out on stage, and they don't take it too seriously. And other people also think that the darkness is kind of a joke band, like, like uh, Steel Panther, which is, could not be farther from the truth. They, they, kind of, they have a sense of humor, they don't take it seriously, but they're not a joke. They kind of do take it seriously, but in a lighthearted way, if that makes any sense. Buccaneers of Hispaniola. Great musicianship. Not the most catchy song, a good riff. I'm going to give it a strong half, but I will give it a half nonetheless. Alright, Nick uh what does King Zalewski give it? He gives it also a half. Okay, so we're we're tight, we're pretty much neck and neck with the scores. Third song is called Solid Gold, which was the second video that they released. When I first heard this song, I did not I thought it was okay. Then I saw the video. The video is fantastic. I love the song after the video. So letting you know now it's a plus one, but it listen to it anyway. Kind of a big rock riff. We're gonna blow people's fucking heads off. People do the shit themselves. Trying out for more, cause you will blow. The sun's going out to the booze. Hell, then forget him or let the notoriety and wealth. After the show, I think we both know. This fist is gonna bump itself. The lyrics are never going to stop shitting out solid gold. Great line to me. I give this one a plus one. Obviously. All right. Next song is called Southern Trains, which this was, I think, the third video that they released. Southern Train. They The video, not a great video. It's a, uh, I think they do it with Snapchat, which I know nothing about that Snapchat app, but it's kind of goofy, I think. I think it's what the kids use. Kind of rock metal riff, not metal, but rock and riff. Rufus Taylor, great drummer, really great drummer. Kind of a riff raff, ACDC lick. gonna give the rocking song good riff or lick whatever you call it 
not as, not as catchy as I'd like. I'm going to give this one a half. What does friend of the show Ken Zalewski give this one? He gives it a plus one. So just made it to a one. All right, next song is called Why Don't the Beautiful Cry? Great, great opening. Melod- Listen to the guitar part. This is the beginning of this song. It's just beautiful. Listen to the guitars. That's obviously Justin Hawkins, and it sounds fucking great. Pretty woman, I love this. This might be my favorite. This is my probably my. It's one of my favorite songs on the album. Say that. Been crying all day, but deep down you're delighted. It's unfair. Cause you. I don't think this sounds like anything they've done before. Maybe it does, but I like this a lot. I think that's catchy as hell. I give this one a big plus one. Ken Zalewski gives it a half. Somebody who has a heart of mine actually believe. Well, you told yourself a Solo, let's do the guitar solo. I'm not a big fan of modulation. But it's a modulation in the middle of a solo. Solo modulates. Great. Bubble and squeak in the frying pan. Frying I love this. I know I'm probably in the minority on this song, but I really, really like this tune. So, so far, I am at... One, two, three, four. Is it four? One, two, three, four out of six. Ken Zalewski, one, two, three. He is also four out of six. All right, next song is called Japanese Prisoner of Love. Kind of a metal riff. been playing this one live for probably the last year I've seen them I've seen videos posted on YouTube on it but I never watched it because I did I kind of wanted to wait until the album came out before hearing the, the songs a couple of these were played live over the past year I like to be surprised when the album comes out I used to sleep in a cup to put 
Guitar parts. Very, very Brian May sounding. The jailbirds on the wings crawl and I sing. Japanese prisoner of love. I almost wish it didn't have the heavy part. is sounding probably way tighter now than they ever have, especially since Rufus Taylor's in the band. It's kind of a complicated sounding song. Lots of parts in this tune. Giving this one a plus one for for a while, I kind of didn't like this song as much, but it's growing on me a lot. It's a well put together song and a very complicated and very musician. It's a music. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. It sounds the musicianship sounds great. I guess what I'm trying to say. I like the song. Plus one. Uh, Kinzaluski Kinza also gives it a plus one. A solid one. All right. Next song, Lay Down With Me, Barbara. I like the songs that break down soft like this. There's a, there's a few of those on this album. I, those are the ones that I kind of am attached to, that I am grow, that I am drawn to. Trust me, darling, you won't need that chemise. I know it's hard to love a man like me, but to do so with the greatest of I wish it had more hooks in the song, but I like I like the overall feel of the tune. The chorus is catchy. Lay down with me, Barbara, underneath the candelabra. Great line. Back it up. Nice too. Who needs moonlight? Ken Zalewski says a solo almost got it over a half. So I guess we better wait until the solo to hear how it brings it up almost over a half. Look upon you need the chandelier. Let's just the most precious moment blindly. Bumbling with the crossbow of your Here 
comes a solo. Great solo. Very, very taste, very tasty. All right, big plus one for me. Kinzelewski says it's a half, so I'm now above. Um, Ken Zalewski. Next song, I Wish I Was in Heaven. Life as we know it ain't what it was. This is a living, I know this because I live like a champion, the envy of me. I am. So far, this was not doing anything for me. It's okay. It's like a uh, melodic AOR. I'm going to give this one a weak half. Verging on a zero, but I will give it a half. Ken Zalewski gives it a half. He says another close but no cigar half. This song is the best song in the album. This song is called Happiness. And they just put out a, a video of this that is animated. This song, to me, is what the darkness, to me, <laughs> rephrase that. This song is what I like most about the darkness. Classic darkness. Super, super fucking catchy, rocking, and anthemic. so gonna make love tonight. They better play this live. I love this song is just fantastic. On the beach here together, holding each other so tight. And I said, This is my heart. No one ever broke it. The one of my ego, you don't have to stroke it. Repeat after me. I love you. I love you. <laughs> oh, what a great tune. Come on. Big, 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 big plus one. As good as any song The Darkness has ever written. Should be a hit song. This is as good as any song that's out there. I wish the entire album sounded like this. Oh, what a solo! 
just a feel-good summer song. And is it going to make the ultimate great song with the breakdown? No, it's not. What a chorus, though. That is how you write a song, friends. What a tune. What a tune. <sighs> All right. The final song on the regular album, not bonus tracks, is called Stampede of Love. Now, Ken Zalewski gives it a zero. I believe, well, the last song on the previous album, um, Last of Our Kind was written and sang by Frankie Pullane. I believe this one is Frankie on vocals as well. So listen to this one. This is called Stampede of Love. Ken gives it a zero. I think it's one of my favorite songs on the album. Look to me with those hungry eyes You were riding up my fries To the naked right, Plus one for me, zero for Ken Zalewski. So I'm going to tally up my score. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, eight and a half out of ten. That's a pretty damn good score. You take more than you Ken Zalewski, I will tally up his. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of ten. Right, I gave it a higher score than him. Maybe this is not a great song. I could, I could probably go down to a half, but I like it. Like a tortoise shell I can't wait to see you again I like the bass player's voice Maybe that's why I like the tune All right, there you go That was a track by track of the Darkness album Pinewood Smile Let's, let's quickly listen to the little bit of bonus tracks First bonus track is called Uniball I give Uniball a half. Rock of Glam is the next bonus track. I like this one. I give this one a plus one. Thank you for the Rock of Glam. I used to whimper like an infant Suckling out an arid I was denied the very things I desired Without the most incomplete I was underdeveloped Until you enveloped me with a love I could scarcely conceive I could stare all day at your decollete I could lose myself in your
All right, I like that one. Seagulls losing my virginity. Bonus track. I like this one. This is a good one, too. A plus one. Also could be sang by the bass player. It might be written sang by Dan. No, it's Dan or it's Justin. I wanna take you higher, higher than the sky. Losing, losing my virginity. Yeah, good tune. Touching each other tenderly, losing my virginity. So if I was gonna do out of the fourteen. Rock and roll game score is just on the vote bonus. I would be up to an eight and a half, nine, ten, eleven out of out of thirteen. Good solo. All right, last bonus track is possibly the best song in the whole album besides Happiness. Rock in Space. Not many lyrics, but it's just a big rock song. And I hope they play this one live, but I kind of doubt they will. I would give this album a 12 out of 14, which is a pretty damn good score. This was going to be in my top 10, but based on that score, it might be in my top 5. Alright friends, I hope you enjoyed this track by track of the Darkness CD. Pinewood smile. Oh, another thing. I was at I was at the record store and I saw this on vinyl. Happiness is not on the vinyl edition. I would be extremely disappointed if the album, the vinyl, didn't have the best song in the album on. All right. So I'm going to wrap it up now, friends. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you like the darkness. If you don't, I'm sorry, friends. You can always fast forward this one. I will see you soon. The next episode may be the best of 2017. I may do a regular show. I may do the be- my top, my favorite albums of 2017. I think I have my list about together. I just have to put it in order. Tomorrow I've got to go to work in the morning, and then as soon as I get done, I'm going to go fishing. It's the last day of rockfish season of the year. I'm going to get in one last day of fishing before it's just crabbing until April and sturgeon. Thank you, friends, for listening. You can find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. Please keep the donations coming. Without your donations, this show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled death. Find me on the Facebook, r r Geek. Find me on the Instagram, rockandrollgeek. Don't ask. Find me on the Twitter, r r Geek. We'll talk to you soon, friends. Be safe on New Year's Eve. I'm going fishing, so hopefully hopefully that's safer than being out with all the drunk drivers and amateurs. I will talk to you soon, friends.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. 